What are sand injectites and how can they help us reinforce a young age creationist worldview? Now, these sedimentary structures are called injectites. If they are composed of sand, then we call them sand injectites. And these sand injectites are found at the base of the Coconino Sandstone in the Grand Canyon area. And they protrude down into the Hermit Formation by as many as 15 meters. Essentially, due to seismic shaking, parts of the partially or non-lithified Coconino Sandstone underwent liquefaction, which just means that the sand became almost like liquid. And it was literally injected down into the partially lithified hermit formation. Now, what makes these sand injectites interesting from a creationist perspective is the interval of time that supposedly passed between the time of the Coconino sandstone's deposition and the seismic activity that caused the sand to be injected down into the hermit formation. You see, the Coconino sandstone was supposedly deposited in a desert environment 275 million years ago. Yet the seismic event that caused the sand to be injected down into the Hermel Formation supposedly occurred between 40 and 60 million years ago, during the latter part of the Laramide mountain building event. Now the first question is, how does desert sand get wet enough to undergo liquefaction? Remember, the Coconino sandstone is interpreted as an aeolian or a desert environment. Uh, the second and even more profound question is, how did the sand stay wet enough to be injected down into the Hermel Formation 250 million years after the Coconino sand was first deposited? Now, a possible solution to the first question proposes that the lower part of the ancient desert was episodically saturated by the infiltration of groundwater. Fair enough. But that still does not answer the second question. Even if groundwater occasionally infiltrated the base of the Coconino sandstone, the sand could not remain wet for 250 million years. Because of fluctuating groundwater levels combined with episodic continental uplift, all terrigenous or land-based sand deposits, they will turn into solid rock within a few tens of thousands of years at most. It is inconceivable that the Coconino sandstone remained unlithified for a million years, let alone 250 million. It is also possible that the seismic events correlate with the deposition of the Coconino sand, but such an interpretation conflicts greatly with the established Laramide mountain building history of North America's west coast. Now, the creationist interpretation I am putting forward here, it's not pseudoscience. Dr. John Whitmore, the young age creationist involved in this research program, published his findings in the prestigious journal, Sedimentary Geology. Now, although the aim of that paper is more concerned with the nature of the injectites themselves, once thought to be mud cracks, he did manage to suggest that, and I quote, it is unlikely the Coconino could have remained uncemented in excess of 250 million years. A rather bold statement for a secular journal. Now, the most parsimonious solution to this problem is that the 250 million years separating the deposition of the Coconino and the Laramide faulting never actually existed. In other words, the two events were separated by just months, years, decades, or centuries, but not millions of years. Yet this interpretation is in direct conflict with conventional dating techniques, a proposal that although conflicting with a secular worldview, nevertheless accords well with a creationist one. Okay, so that's all from me, Ken Colson here at Creation of Following. Look, if you thought this video was in any way interesting and helpful, please, Share it right now on all of your social media platforms. Hit that pound button, subscribe, and ring the bell for easier access to videos as I upload them. As usual, I appreciate prayer. There is a link in the description if you'd like to give. That's always appreciated. And we'll see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.